Alright, so here's where we're at. Yesterday, ran all the battery out of the GoPro, got work done today, cleaned up the camper, finished some of the jobs I had to fix on the camper. Man, I will tell you what. I don't care what anybody says. If they say it, they don't just don't know anything. It's a heck of a lot hotter out west than 85 degrees with 90% humidity. I'll take that any day. It was 15% humidity and 100 degrees going down the river the other day. We were only out about four hours. I literally think I had heat stroke or something by the end of the night. Nauseous, I felt sick, and I was plenty hydrated. Last year we went down the Upper Iowa River and ate our raft thing, and it was not a big deal. You saw just a couple weeks ago we did the uh, Skunk River in Iowa. Not a big deal. Yeah, there's no comparison. I don't care if they say it's a dry heat or not. Hot is hot. And when you're 100 degrees on actual real temperature, not this virtual crap, it's 100 degrees. And it's insane. Anyway. The air conditioning will not keep up. It will not even attempt to keep up here. Again, as you saw, no issues in Iowa. It's always worked. They gave us a small fit last year in the Black Hills. But 100 degree temperature, the air conditioning in this Geo Pro is crap. Now, it's not a complete fault of the air conditioning. It would normally work fine. But the issue is, is you have to set it about at one quarter on the thermostat, because otherwise, it won't ever cycle off. One quarter is about 81 degrees. As long as you keep the temperature in this camper at 81 degrees, the coil inside of it, the evaporation coil or whatever they call it, won't freeze up. If you set the thermostat to try to get it any colder than that, which is not a thermostat, it's a little cold hot knob, it's really hard to keep it to where it will cycle off, which is full bore on. And because it can't ever get it cool enough, just runs and then as it starts to get ice up you get less airflow and it just gets hotter and then eventually you're completely iced up because you have no airflow so it's because it's so hot here it just it, there's nothing wrong there's no issue with the compressor as far as there's no leaks in and stuff like that it blows out plenty of cold air it just doesn't cycle off so I did order back order because as I mentioned the other day I screwed it up but I will have that new temperature control that has the free sensor on it. You're going to want that. If you plan on using this camper in the desert, anything 100 degrees and over. And we actually had it heat up, like I say, even in the Black Hills. That was September and it froze up. But it was a 90 degree day. So, what did I get finished? I got this painted. I just painted it white. But that's the piece of trim there that I used to fix the fact that they cut this panel too big and so it's going to keep popping out. Again, it's 15% humidity, so it's not popping out because of humidity. It's too big. So what did I do to fix the drawers? Well, you already know I had issues with the drawer rails being really weak. We know that they already replaced the drawer rails on the bottom. They didn't replace both like I requested, so I went ahead and replaced both. And they were somewhat locking, but they don't lock well enough because they're traditional heavy-duty cabinet rails and not really designed for cameras. So, as I showed the other day, I got the little clamps. Also, this stuff is like the worst particle board you can get. It's like cardboard. <laughs> Literally, it's bad. So all these are screwed in, but also I liquid nailed the heck out of it. I liquid nailed it on the back, I liquid nailed the screws. Same on this side, liquid nailed on the back, liquid nailed on the screws. So on the top one, I'm able to put it on the side here, and it clears. As you can see, it clears. On the bottom one, there's no clearance over here. There's not enough. You can't, you can't do it. So on the bottom one, I had to put them right here. So you're gonna want that. But now these lock pretty good. That locks pretty good. So as you can see, I added also this. I got eye bolts right here and right here. And so with these eye bolts, they have a half inch circle. So this goes on the outside of the metal, so it's not rubbing against the paint. The worst is it might eventually over time wear down a little of, uh, of the finish on the metal, but that's okay. And then I just thread it 
It's on the outside, but I just thread it through the bottom one right here. I put a little screw right here. This prevents it from going down too far and prevents it from ever rubbing against the floor while you're traveling. But there you go. Check it out. This door ain't opening at all. And if this one opens, it's got enough tension that it pretty much shuts it back. So there you go. That'll keep those doors shut in transit in addition to the locks. Also, this always was coming open. They only had one, I added the second. It's nice and stout now. Also, these kept coming open. So I put these right here, one on each one, just one. Because they always come open. But that should take care of those. So as far as I repaired the drawers, reinforced all the screws in there, liquid nailed the crap out of everything. I added the eye bolts and the dowel to add extra support. I added the little locking mechanisms. So those drawers are now more sturdy than they ever have been. And then one last thing, it's not perfect, but I added this will flip up. Now it's got a little bit of a swing in it. So you don't have enough to hook a little clip on the back. Now maybe if I could mess with it some more, I could clip it so that it would latch. But these were hanging before off just brackets. So every time you hit, went around a corner or anything, it had all the weight. I figure now it's just gonna flap on a hinge. But look at this. I cut blocks of wood, brought it up a little bit so it has clearance on the floor. This is screwed in with big, big screws. Because this, whatever they use here, I think it's plywood, but it's not very sturdy plywood if it is. It might be particle board also under there. But then I drilled this wood out a little bit and then with a smaller bit and then ran screws in, liquid nailed the crap out of it. Same here, same there. I got now an easy access to under here. I can store my ham radio, store my antenna pole, maybe could store some fishing poles under there, whatever the case may be. It's not necessarily easy access, but it does provide some access without it making it look ugly. You still got you still got it covered. So let's go ahead and switch that down. There you go. So hopefully that takes care of all the upgrades and repairs this trip and hopefully it'll make it back without falling apart more. The bed is beginning to separate even more from the wall, which when I took it to the dealer to be fixed, they said, there's no issue, the bed's not attached to the wall because Leech Camper Sales and Council Bluffs are morons. I don't know how they can't see the screws connecting the bed to the wall, but they couldn't even fix that. Again, that's a whole nother video. I'm not even gonna go in it anymore. Just know that 90% of these RV dealers, most of them are just crooks. They're worse than used car salesmen, and the people that work in the service department are probably the hacks that couldn't make it in the automobile industry. So just buy used, fix it yourself, save 10 grand, don't buy a Geo, buy a Winnebago, buy anything, don't buy a Rockwood. They're garbage. I put that in every video now. I want people to know Rockwood Geo Pro is not the best, just getting better. They're crap. Don't do it. You're spending extra money for crap. Just save your money, buy a used camper that's all plywood construction, tandem axle, only 500 pounds more, like the Winnebago 2106 series. You're gonna be happier in the long run. And even if you have issues with it, the 10 grand you saved, you can use to spend on upgrade yourself. Not to mention the camper can handle the weight of the upgrades because it can carry 7,200 pounds because it's a tandem axle. So that's my words of advice and I put that in practically every video when I talk about this camper now because I want everybody to know that Rockwood is garbage and don't waste your money on them. They're, they're not a quality product, don't be fooled. If you want a quality product, buy a quality product. Rockwood is not a quality product. Just don't do it. It's, it's marketing and it's garbage.